Well, I came from a uh, coal mining family, poor family. And my mother nor dad went to college, but they really thought education was the only way. They were, we were a big family, nine children. Every one of us either took some kind of post-high school, I'll call it, uh, either business courses. I, I happened to have loved mathematics when I was in grammar school. So my dad just thought I should pursue that, but nothing could I pursue it in except teaching. I uh, had won a scholarship through the coal mining company that he worked for. So he thought I should go to the teacher's college and become a teacher. And it was more to my, it wasn't as uh, uh, social. I mean, they had no sororities or anything. So I went to Florence State right at, at the age of 15, out of high school, and going to teach, but never taught. I did not want to go away from home to teach, but Florida offered so much more money than Alabama, and Huntsville had offered me a job at $1,900 a year to teach math at a high school in Huntsville. And uh, Florida in uh, Palm Beach, they offered me 3100 a year. But that's a long way from home, and Palm Beach is not, teachers don't, make, don't, don't live too well, I wouldn't think, in Palm Beach. But I did not, I wanted to take it for the money, but I did not want to either. So my roommate said, flip a coin and let the coin decide whether you take the job in Florida. Well, I didn't like those odds, but I said, okay, I'll flip it, and if it stands on its edge, I will take the job in Florida. <laughs> so I flipped a quarter, no exaggeration, it rolled up against my desk leg and stood on its edge. So I accepted the job in Florida and was planning to go, even though I'd only get home once a year, so I got a telegram from them saying they had received my credentials and they assumed there had been an error made because according to the credentials, I was 18 years old. And in Florida, you cannot teach under the, uh, in high school under the age of 21. So if that were true, then they would have to cancel the offer. And it was true. So I didn't have to go to, to the teaching job and I came to Huntsville to Redstone Arsenal and met my husband. Huntsville was a single woman's paradise with all the engineers during the early 50s. Huntsville was so small you, you really could not get a place to live. It was very, for, for a long time. Everybody made money that had land. As I said, no daycare, so naturally no daycares. I don't think anywhere in the U.S., but no, no help. I saw where you could get uh, someone to stay at your home, and I kept one for 23 years because I didn't want my children coming home to an empty house. Too little of everything in Huntsville at the time. Too little services, too little uh, apartments, uh, stores, everything was booming. I came to uh, Redstone before NASA, came right out of college. 18 years old, too young to teach school, which is what my training had been, but studied mathematics. So I went to work for Roman Haas, a company, for six months and realized that the Army was really begging for mathematicians and engineers. So I came to work for Redstone Arsenal as a mathematician on the Von Braun's uh, Army ballistic missile team. This was in 1952 when I went to work for Redstone. I worked through the Redstone and Jupiter phase until NASA came, and I was with the Army whenever Marshall was formed, and they transferred all of us into Marshall. The engineers, uh, naturally, their problems had to be solved by uh, solving the equations, the mathematical differential equations, the uh, trajectories, the guidance and control, studies, and those had to be programmed to be solved by the computer. But I worked for the Army on develop uh, computer programming for the different computers, beginning with a card program computer, which was uh, very, very, well, the first one we had at, at Marshall, and then on until the UNIVAC, which was the one we used during the launch of Apollo. At that time, though, 
we needed more people to, to provide computation support because we had committed to go to the moon and we didn't understand how we were going to get there, but we knew it was going to take a lot of work. So rather than hire people that were government employees, and it's difficult to retire or to get rid of some of those, they hired a contractor, which was very good. General Electric came as a contractor, and it was the first one, I think, that NASA had at Marshall. But it was to provide all computational support. I did not want to go to the contractor because my husband questioned if I, you, they lose the contract, what will you do? I will be here working for NASA. And I love my job, but I, they, they said, we'll have a place for you in NASA. So I stayed with NASA, did not go with the contractor. But then I became a, what they monitoring and interfacing the contractor's work with NASA engineers. So I stayed active in knowing what was needed and what was would take to do the job and, and had a lot more people, but they were contractor. And the computers were changing all the time, I mean, improving. They started, as I said, from a card program computer to a multitasking uh, digital uh, Univac 1108 air conditioned building. We had to have air conditioning for the computers, but our offices were not air conditioned in Alabama. In I did not know any women that was working here as a mathematician when I came. They were what they call computers, which the mathematicians, we, we programmed with big sheets of uh, columns of uh, instructions as to what they would do, and they really were called officially math aides, but they were known as computers. They would actually take and do whatever we said do in a particular column. We coded these columns to solve the equations, and they would compute that for us so that we could analyze and decide what, uh, the, the solution to the problem. I was the only mathematician at the time that I came to work for the Redstone Arsenal that I knew. They gave me a lot of publicity, very embarrassing, but they wrote me up for magazines and had pictures taken of my house and my family, and uh, I, well, I only had a husband at that time. But even my daughter, when she was born, which was ten, about 10 years later, they gave her publicity because it was so strange. There were no daycares, so we had to provide help to take care of the children, naturally. And I had a daughter and a wonderful day mama. And as my husband said, she and I made about the same salary because I paid her dearly, So, but she was very reliable. Yes, I worked for Doris Chandler. She, was, uh, she had gone to Sophie Newcomb College. It was later but not, uh, and she was much, much smarter than I. So she came to work for Marshall. She, I, yes, she even came to work for the Army before NASA came, but it was after I did. And she came uh, in the, not in the same section I was in, but in the Air Ballistics Laboratory. And she worked with me in developing the program, the targeting program for the tactical Jupiter missile for the Air Force. So she was w one of the the brain. Nothing of this, as you know, is accomplished individually. We all work together, but she was one of the great contributors to it. I did a job that normally a man would do, but I did it not because I was a woman. I did it because of the desire to work and to succeed. As We as a team work. Everyone worked. So it showed that uh, equality was necessary, and I think laws were passed because of this. But that was another thing that came, the equal rights law. It, your race did not determine your thinking ability. Uh, your education might, but uh, your, your race and sex, or gender, I guess you'd call it, would not determine what job you could do. My role was to, in these particular early launches of the Apollo missions, was uh, training to for the final one, really, I was responsible for all computer support for Marshall Space Flight Center, whether it was programming, machine time, uh, uh, interface with other centers. I was responsible to see if that was done. And there were no guidelines. We had a computer that was capable of solving any 
engineers' problems, but when you throw all engineers' problems into the computer, it would move them in and out so that uh, nothing would get done, we'll say. So we, we had simulations that we actually, uh, before any mission, I knew what programs were necessary, but I did not know which ones would run and get completed. So we would simulate, just take over the computer and simulate uh, a real launch and determine which ones, and we learned that way. Since we had no documents, no guidelines, uh, only one person could do it, and uh, the director, Dr. Holzer, had appointed me. In fact, I wish I had kept it, but did, I did not. Uh, Dr. Von Braun sent a handwritten note to the computation laboratory and said, during the launch, Billy Robertson will say what goes on the computer. And I don't know why I did not save that handwritten note, because it, it was quite a, a responsibility, but it was showing how fast we had to move. We did not know what we would need until, because each, each mission was so different, you needed different you had different problems and different solutions were needed. So when President Kennedy said we would go to the moon, I thought, it's, it's not possible. We can't. No, no, there's no way. It, I really thought it was impossible. And for, for a long time, I did not think we would ever. Uh, you had to have computers, and computers would not fit in this room, you know. And, and, uh, but technology changes, and everyone was working to make the impossible possible. But the, it was exciting, except it was a dream I thought would never happen. Whenever we realized it was Apollo 11, and we were uh, in the countdown, we'll say, every emotion I've ever experienced, I, I experienced. I was in the computer room because, uh, as I said, we did not have, uh, we, we did not have written guidelines as to what we would do, but, but we knew what we were to do. But the excitement, the fear, there was one thing I had never dreamed of until that might happen, but we had taken care of it, we thought, and that was the loss of electricity, which that meant the computers would glitch or something. We had, uh, but we had never practiced that. So I suddenly had that fear, what, what if we lose electricity? which we did not. But it was, uh, everyone was working, it was very quiet. Nobody was laughing, talking. Uh, it was just work, serious. But uh, when we got through Marshall's responsibility, which there, once we were, knew we could go to the moon, the conditions were right, well then it was just sort of uh, joy, just, just a complete let down of uh, relaxation, I guess you'd say. So, it was every emotion I have ever experienced. I felt fear, happiness, uh, excitement, and and worry. That, when that was over, of course, then all of the other was just uh, learning and appreciating and, and saying, "Well, it it happened." You know, we, by that time, I realized, or, or or Marshall realized, we had to have written documents so in case. What if I had not been there, not that anyone's indispensable, I'm sure someone would have picked up that had worked with me, but still, it's, uh, you, need, you need guidelines, you need documents for people to go by and, uh, for launches. So I wrote the document that they accepted as to what was to be done for the Apollo mission. And therefore, they said, well, you aren't needed here. We can follow this so you can go to watch the launch which was very, very good. So my husband and I and two children uh, went to uh, the Cape and VIP treatment, they were very, it was very exciting. But, uh, I, and I wasn't in the computer room, I wasn't even there, and I don't know that they used my manual that I had written, but, but it was there in case they needed it, so. I worked with Clyde a lot as a mathematician, and then he was promoted to a bigger, more responsible job. He did it for, for the computation laboratory and then also for the Equal Opportunity Office. I consider it a, a, a bonus that I got to even have known Clyde because he was very, very helpful to a lot of people outside of work. I mean.
The, the Germans were very, very cordial, very smart, very uh, studious, and it was contagious. We all worked harder, I guess, when you're around people that are working hard. But I worked for uh, Dr. Holker, Rudolf Holker, and he, if I had any spare time, which we were, were, didn't have much, but he taught me how to letter. After leaving Aeroballistics Lab, I went truly programming for the computers with Dr. Helmut Holzer. They were, they, they were wonderful, wonderful to, to me and, and to everyone. Dr. Holzer, the janitor, was just as important to him as uh, the top engineer on his staff. So. They worked very hard. They worked continuously. They did not take coffee breaks. Because I worked, my, uh, Dr. Holker, who was with me in Aeroballistics Laboratory when I first came to NASA, there was no air conditioning, as I said, in the building. He bought a unit and put in his office window for his room and moved me into the room with him. So I shared an office with the director so I would have air conditioning. I know he worked all the time, and as I said, when I had free time, he gave me a training in something I had never had in school. He was, I found the same thing with Dr. Holzer. They were very, very uh, non-discriminatory, or, or maybe, maybe they were a little bit uh, more helpful to the women than the men, I don't know. But to me, they showed no discrimination at all. No, my husband was in World War II, and a lot of them, they had been trained, you know, they, the, the Germans were the enemies. So it took some serious thinking to not, to get over some of that, I guess. But well, it had to be the, the launch of going to the moon. It might have been just as exciting when we went around the moon. The very first uh, figure eight trip, I guess you'd call it. And... Uh, I remember my husband had to work on Christmas Eve night, I remember, and, but we were all excited, the children, and I was home, I did not work. I only had to work during launches, during the actual launch, because once it was on its way to the, uh, out of orbit, uh, Marshall had no computer requirements. We learned so much in science, space technology. There were so many things. Building materials became much lighter. Computers, much smaller. Uh, semiconductors, all of this was from the face, uh, space program or, or from the research that, that we had to do to learn to, to go to the moon. So personally, I f it was proof to me that there is a God out there. It's so big, we're so tiny on this little blue marble. Without a God, we could not survive and yet all mankind depends on the earth. So to me, it was proof in, in a God or a supernatural to, to provide this for us. The, the entire NASA employment, I will say, your job was very exciting. I really, uh, I've never met a person that did not enjoy working for NASA. And I don't, I don't mean, Happy, happy, I mean it was uh, uh, exciting, pleasure. You, you feel like you accomplished something. Even though we were learning every day new stuff and it was uh, a new challenge, it seemed like every day, but uh, very, very exciting. We truly, everyone, and I say we because everyone I knew loved working for NASA. It was a, a job that uh, the country thought was impossible, but we were gonna do our best and and truly have found out if we work together as a team, we will accomplish much more than you expect.